Hello guys, today we're going to have an update on the Britain's cane low loader. We're going to add a 2200 mAh battery, we're going to add our Arduino, a few LEDs, and since we have so much space, we're going to try and add uh, some capacitors to uh, give us a bit of smoothing so our servos don't jitter so much. So the first thing we'll have a look at is this 2200 mAh battery. Uh, this should give us plenty of life for whatever tractor is pulling this uh, trailer. Uh, I think normally the batteries I use are somewhere between 300 and 800 milliamp hour, depending on which model I have. So this 2200 milliamp hour battery should give us plenty of life. And the only reason we're able to use such a big battery is because we have plenty of space under this uh, large low loader. Um, this is a single cell battery by the way, it's 3.7 volts, same as uh, all the other batteries. And the plan is to position it under the chassis here. So that means that we're going to have to get rid of the air tank here, because it's just going to be in our way. And we're probably going to have to cut a section out of this uh, strengthening piece of the chassis here. And that should let our battery fit up here. And then we'll be able to put our microcontroller in behind it here. First thing to do is take the model apart again, which isn't a big job, it's only two screws. And then we can have a look at what we're actually going to be removing. So, so what we need to do is cut this air tank off here and cut this piece down to around about the height of this one. Because if you look there the battery is just about that uh, that dimension. So we we'll cut this down at this height, it should fit in. And that would leave our battery in something like that there. Leaving plenty of space for our electronics. I've gotten rid of uh, the air tank now that used to be sitting in there, so that's gone. And cut away this piece of the frame. So now our battery fits in there perfectly. That's pretty ideal. We just need to wire it up to the rest of the system. That shouldn't be a problem. And we have these two cavities here, so I'm thinking we'll add these uh, capacitors in here. So they'll just add a little bit of smoothing for uh, the servos because uh, there's an internal resistance in the battery. So when the servo tries to jump to a position, it needs a big current spike, and the battery's not always able to supply that. So capacitor can dump that current instantly. So we'll add two of these. These are. Uh, 1000 microfarad capacitors and uh, the only reason I've chose them is because I had them lying around and they fit in there. So that's all there is to that. I have this cheap little through hole switch for the power switch so I'm just going to mount that up here in front of the battery. I'll probably cut off this bit of board, drill a little hole through it, drill a hole through that and tap it to M2 probably, put a little bolt in there just to fix that in place. and. Then we can just wire that up to the rest of our system. And with any luck that little switch should be able to supply enough current for uh, for our system here. Okay, here's the switch added in, just a little bit of uh puff board or power board, whatever you call it. Um switch back and forth, no problem. So now I'll drill a couple of holes for the wires for the capacitors here and wire them up to the switch, wire the battery up to the switch and then we'll have to start looking into the microcontroller. Here's the switch wired up with our uh, battery and servo connected. So we just have the grounds one along one side, the battery connection comes in to the switch, then to the positives and there's our little switch and we no, it's connected because if we flick the switch, we see a little jitter on the servo. You hear that noise? It means the servo is getting power. So that's our switch coming on and off. So that's working. I still have the signal wire for the servo uh, running free. So that's going to get connected to uh, the Arduino when it's uh, in here. So the Arduino will be in there. Servo will get connected to that, and the the two capacitors are also connected. They're wired in, uh, they're wired in parallel to the battery. So 
when the switch is flicked the battery charges up these two servos and then when the motor needs to or the servo needs to move quickly you can get the extra current it needs from here that will just hopefully stop the uh, light stimming on the tractor and stuff like that ok I've added in the microcontroller and I've added the connections here we have our serial signal to control it our power and our ground wire so when I flick the switch you can see our lights are all coming on and you can see it took a little while to to dull down that's because of the capacitors here so I've run out of time again this week but uh, I think we got a lot done the next uh, video will be adding LEDs and testing it out I'll uh, write the code during the week for this so it should be just a case of adding the LEDs and I'll be able to test it out so it should be pretty simple um, if you like that video make sure and hit the like button and uh, if you have any questions post them either below or post them in the forum and I'll do my best to answer them and that's everything for this week so thanks very much for watching